Good day, future teachers. This is part 5 of series of video tutorials as a reviewer nyo sa licensure examination for teachers, specifically Gen Ed Mathematics. Okay, let's get started. Problem number 1. A van consumes 8 liters of gasoline to cover 80 kilometers. How far can it go on 15 liters of gasoline? This kind of problem ay pasok ito sa tinatawag nating proportion. So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng proportion. Yung una, we have direct, direct proportion. Then, the other one is inverse proportion. Kapag ganito yung problem natin, kailangan mong i-analyze yung problem bago ka mag-proceed sa computation. Okay? Kasi pag mali ang analyzation mo, Malamang mali ang magiging sagot mo. Okay, what is direct proportion? Pag sinabing direct proportion, uh, let's say yung isang variable tumataas, the other variable also increases. Pero kung isang variable bumababa, the other variable also decreases. Direct. Parehas tumataas, parehas bumababa. Now, for inverse proportion, kung ang isa ay tumataas, yung isa ay bumababa. Or vice versa, kung isa ay bumababa, yung isa ay tumataas. That's inverse proportion. Now, let's analyze problem number one. Ivan consumes 8 liters. Okay, eto, 8 liters. Tapos, ang kanyang matatravel daw na distance ay 80 kilometers. So, therefore, kung tumataas itong gasolina niya, yung, yung nakukonsume niyang gasolina, Definitely, tataas yung distance or hahaba yung distance na tatravel niya. So, therefore, this is direct proportion. This is direct proportion. Kasi habang tumataas yung, yung liters ng gasolina mo, mas humahaba yung matatravel mo. So, therefore, this is direct proportion. Now, bibigyan ko kayo ng tip in how to solve this problem without computation. Paano yun? Definitely, Kasi sabi natin, habang tumataas yung liters of gasoline, tumataas yung distance, yung kilometers na matatravel niya. So, kung 8 liters yan, tumaas yung, yung liters natin, naging 15 liters. So, definitely, tataas dapat yung uh, distance na matatravel niya. So, hindi na itong letter A. This is 1.5. Kasi dapat tataas yan, di ba? Naging from 8 to 15. So, dapat tataas yan. So, definitely not 1.5. Hindi rin 42.7. Let's eliminate that. Kasi nga, yung 8 liters, 80 kilometers na eh. So, hindi dapat bababa ng 80 kilometers. Now, let's stack tayo sa 150 and 160. Remember, na yung kung, kung dodoble itong liters of gasoline, dapat dodoble rin yung ating Distance. Let's assume na tumatakbo yung sasakyan at the same rate. Dapat do-double rin ito. So, kung magiging times 2 itong number of liters natin, dapat times 2 din yung ating kilometers, di ba? So, kung times 2 to 16, ilan yung distance natin? 160. So, definitely, hindi itong letter D. Bakit? Hindi naman to 16 eh. Kung 16 liters yan, E di doblehin lang natin to, that's 160, pero 15 lang to. So definitely, this is not letter D. Okay? So, ito na lang ang natira, the answer is letter B. That's only one of the techniques ano, sa pagsasolve nito. Pero, ito yung paraan paano natin siya i-compute. So, uh, erase ko itong uh, inverse proportion kasi magbibigay tayo ng problem yan sa problem number 2. So, tandaan ito, ano, kapag ka direct proportion, divide, divide, okay? Pagka inverse proportion, multiply, tandaan yan. So, we have 8 liters over or divide 80 kilometers. Equal yan sa, kung liter ito, dapat liter din sa taas, okay? 15 liters divided by or over since hindi natin alam kung ilan yung distance na matatravel, uh, let's use the variable x. Okay. Then, 
we can now cross multiply. So 8 times x, that's 8x. Then 80 times 15, that's 1,200. Now to eliminate 8, para makancel natin yung 8, divide natin yan. Both sides of the equation by 8. So cancel na to. X is equal to 1,200 divided by 8. That is 150 kilometers. Which is letter B. So that is how to solve direct proportion. That's number 1. Number 2. Three pumps can fill a tank in 60 minutes. How long will six pumps of the same kind can fill a tank? Okay, so this is again a proportion. Pero dapat alam natin, if, alamin muna natin if this is inverse or direct. So kung tatlong pumps yan, uh, mapupuno niya daw yung tank ng, sa loob ng 60 minutes. So kung six pumps yan, ano ang mangyayari sa time? Tataas ba o bababa? Remember, 3 pumps, 60 minutes. So, kung 6 pumps yan, ibig sabihin, mas marami, no? Yung tutulong para mapuno yung ating tank. So, kung mas marami ang tutulong, ito ay mga workers, no? Mas kukonti dapat yung minutes. Tumataas yung isa, tumataas yung number of pumps, anong nangyayari sa minutes or sa time? Bumababa kasi nga nagtutulong-tulong sila. So, anong representation ito? This is inverse proportion. Inverse proportion. Now, kung kanina, sa direct proportion divide, sa inverse proportion naman ay multiply. Tatandaan na, sa direct proportion divide, meron tayong over, meron tayong fraction. Sa inverse proportion, magmamultiply tayo. So, we have three pumps. So, we have three so, kung kanina over tayo, divide nyo yung times tayo, no? Sa inverse, times 60 equals ilang pumps, 6 pumps, times since hindi natin alam kung ilang minutes or yung time, uh, we use the variable x. So, 6 times x. So, 3 times 60, that's 180. 6 times x, so that is 6x. Now, to eliminate yung 6 para matira yung x natin, cancel. So, our x now is 180 divided by 6, that is 30. So, therefore, our answer is letter B. Ulitin ko, ano, pag direct proportion over divide. Tapos cross multiply. Pero pagka inverse proportion, walang over. Ganyan lang. Okay? Then, you can use any variable. Pwede A, B, C. But uh, usually ginagamit kasi yung X. Okay? So, I hope naintindihan ano ang kaibahan ng direct at inverse proportion. Let's have number 3. How many meters in 6 kilometers? Well, this is very easy question. Ano? Kasi yung 1 1 kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So therefore, if there are 6 kilometers, so 6 times 1,000, that is 6,000 meters. Okay? So madali lang siya. Number 4, 1 fourth of 5 over 10 of 120 is blank. Okay. So kapag ganito yung problem, start muna tayo dito sa dulo. Okay? So, what is 5 over 10 of 120? Yung 5 over 10 is also the same with 1 half, di ba? Kasi pag na lowest term natin yan, that is 1 half. Nag-divide tayo both, both numbers by 5. So, 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Kaya siya naging 1 half. So, what is 1 half of 120? Di ba? Kalahati ng 120 ay 60. Or... 120 times 1 half. So, remember, pag whole number, may over 1 yan. So, 120 times 1, that's 120. 1 times 2 is 2. So, 120 divided by 2, that's 60. Or simply, ano ang kalahati ng 120? Di ba? Mas madali yun. Okay? Now, after mo makuha yung 5 over 10 or 1 half ng 120, kunin mo na ngayon yung 1 fourth ng 60. 
So, ano ang one-fourth ng 60? So, 60 times one-fourth. Okay. May over one yan. Multiply the numerators. Multiply the denominators. What is 60 divided by 4? That is 15. Okay. So, therefore, our answer is letter B. Okay. Next. Number 5, what is the sum of the first 100 positive integers? Okay, kapag ganito yung problem, you can actually use this method. May mga formula yan, but I think mas madali kung gagamitin natin to. Let's say 1 plus 2 plus 3, kasi iyan yung ibig sabihin yan eh. I-add down natin lahat ng numbers, positive numbers, ah, positive integers, kasi we are talking about whole numbers lang, hanggang 100. So, plus 98 plus 99 plus 100. Yan yung, yan, yan yung ibig niyang sabihin. Now, how to solve this one? Remember, na itong pair na to, no? 100 plus 1 is 101. ba? Kung mapapansin nyo din to, 99 plus 2 is also 101. At yung 3 hanggang plus 98 is also 101. At ang susunod dyan, 4 plus 97 is also 101. So, anong mapapansin nyo? Bawat pair mula dito hanggang dito is 101. So, kung 101 yan, ilang pair yan, ilang 101 yan? Since that's 50, ay, since this is 100, ilang pairs yan? O, di 50, di ba? So, ita times lang natin sa 50. Okay? So, our answer is 5,050. Okay? So, that is letter A. Ganun lang siya. Now, if ko tinanong naman what is the sum of the first uh, 200 num positive integers, ganun lang din ang pwede niyong prosesong gawin. Mas mabilis yan. Okay? So, I hope na intindihan at makatulong sana ito sa iyong board exam. Good luck to your exam. Salamat po sa panonood.